What's up, Wolfpack fans? We are now live here post game following the NC State win over Texas Tech 80 to 67 in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Speaking of survive in advance, because obviously this is what NC State did this evening, Kenton Gibbs, would you like to tell us your experience with both surviving and advancing? Yeah, I got in a little bit of a wreck on Six Forks uh, yesterday, but I'm good, y'all. I'm, I'm obviously here, you know. Body's going through a little bit of pain, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's nothing compared to playing five games in five days and then coming out against a uh, higher-seeded team on, what, two, three days rest after that? So, you know, this is – this this team, they've they're they're nothing short of a miracle, nothing short of, of spectacular. And uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to keep covering them, honestly. You know, I I, I said that uh God when they, when NC State wins one, I could die a happy man. And he he, you know, he said, ah, you sure? I said, oh, hold on, not so fast. But you know, everything is everything. And uh this this team, man, this team, how special, right? They're the story, they're really the story. They're the bunch that, you know, are, are doing things that we haven't seen here in literal decades. So, you know, it, it's nothing but love for this team. This live post-game show is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at Nissan USA. So as I mentioned, NC State picks up an 80 to 67 win over Texas Tech in the opening round. Kenton, you kind of touched on it there. What a ride that all of us are on. We are just sitting here and witnessing the latest of historic runs in the history of NC State basketball. And this game here, we all had the nerves. We said coming into this, okay, law of the wolf, we're going to keep our expectations exactly how they were last week in the ACC tournament because it seemed to work. Yeah. You couldn't help but feel nervous seeing NC State, of course, back in March Madness. You're playing against a Big 12 team in Texas Tech, and we all know the reputation that the Big 12 teams have been, some for some reason, labeled with throughout this college basketball season. They told us the ACC is just not as good <laughs> as the Big yeah. 12. Yeah, the, the Big 12, when they struggle to score, oh, it's just incredible defense, and they're out there pushing it to the limit. These ACCs, you know, ACC schools, uh, you know, it's just not what it used to be. It ain't your daddy's ACC. That's what they told us. Mm -hmm. 80 and, to 67. And yet somehow this is, you know, and, and I, I don't want to take away from the wolf back here, but I just want to talk about that, that ACC Big 12 topic for just a second here. The thing that I find so interesting is the ACC has allegedly not been up to snuff the past couple of years, and yet we're the only – Power Five conference that's had a team in the Final Four each of the last what was it two three years? I right. mean, what are we what are we doing here? This this conference is as good as anybody, and if you are going to say that this conference is not that, I would ask you by what metrics? Because if we're talking success at the tournament at in tournament time, does it not continue to be the ACC? Do we not continue to to show and prove? And I'll tell you this much. As much as people talk about Coach Keats and all the, the complaints that we've had about him, how many questions can he answer in one in, in a what two week span? Hey, we we questioned the timeout calling we, in, in clock management. He did an excellent job of that in the ACC tournament. We questioned, hey, can your offense go in structure? Can you have multiple guys get it done? Because we started to kind of receive back into that Mark Gottfried era of basketball where it was like, if your ISO score can't get it done, you're cooked. He answered those questions with multiple guys coming along in the tournament as well. You looked in last and said they can't, uh, or actually second to last, you said they can't get stops unless they get turnovers. We only generated eight turnovers against the Dirty Foot Club, won the, the ACC championship. And the final question, can Keats, win an AC, uh, can Keats win an NCAA tournament game? Can he win a tournament game? That has been the question because it hasn't happened up to this point. And yet again, when when that moment comes, Keats is, you know, he's there to, to answer the bell. And, you know, I'm getting a little more excited than I should here because I'm, I'm feeling it a little bit. But I'll tell you, this team, man, it, it, they continue to answer the questions. And I'm excited to see how far they can go uh, with this mindset. And, and like I've always said about this run from the beginning, enjoy, expect nothing, enjoy everything. Right. Yeah, Kevin Keats has certainly addressed the NCAA tournament allegations. 
I think he's also addressed, like you touched on, the distributing minutes allegations. I thought even with DJ Burns tonight, I thought he did a phenomenal job up to the point where apparently he did have four fouls. I'm not so con- I'm not even convinced that he did have four. I guess he had four. It was three right. by my count, but leaving him in that late in the game, I- I'd have to assume he did know and it was a trust factor. But I think we we saw over the course of last week and then again tonight he seems to have really put his thumb on how to manage these guys' minutes and get the most out of them <laughs> while they're on the floor. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of comments here about Ben Middlebrooks. Ben Middlebrooks was the X factor tonight. And in some of the moments where you had to take DJ Burns off of the court to get a breather or his foul count was getting up, Ben Middlebrooks was there to answer the bell. He had his career high. I think he already had it in the first half. And then went on to score, what was it, 21 points? 21 yeah, points tonight for Ben yeah. Middlebrooks, career high. Benny, big buckets. Yeah. What an yeah. effort from Middlebrooks tonight. And, you know, last week it was kind of the DJ Burns and Mo Diara show. I mean, the two of them also had a spectacular night. But for Middlebrooks to step up in this game and be basically the, the, the train conductor in this one, the three big men, they said it there late in the game, when we had 70 points, the big men between Burns, Middlebrooks, and DR combined for 50 of those 70. Outstanding effort from the front court tonight. Yeah, and uh, the the reality is we we got to acknowledge, again, what was one of the other big concerns about uh, about Coach Keys. He can't generate any front court, court scoring if it's not DJ Burns backing folks down. <clears throat> mm, <Chris>. Hello. <laughs> where are you? <laughs> All right. Listen, I, I understand the people who are like, hey, how did you all completely do 180 on Keats in, in such a short span? Look at the product that is on the floor. Look at what is happening. Look at what we are seeing in real time. Again, I'm I'm sorry to tell you, but maybe, you know, you haven't been in a good relationship before. But if you tell your partner, hey, I hate when you leave the toilet seat up and they, they put it down from then going forward. I hate when you leave the cap off the toothpaste and all of a sudden they not only put the cap on, they put it back in the cabinet every time. You get excited about that. You love on them more for it. So that's what I'm going to do with Keats. I'm going to love on them more for the fact that he has shown up and he's he's done the things that have been constant complaints throughout his entire seven-year tenure. He's This team has course corrected in – spectacular fashion over these last six games. So again, I don't know about you, but I'm not the type of person to say, you put the you put the cap on the toothpaste this time, but you didn't always do it. And so I'm not happy with you. Listen, we're going to take these wins and we're going to let the good times roll while they're rolling. Yeah. And, and getting into DJ Burns here, so funny to watch a team outside of the ACC try to figure out how to defend him on the fly. I mean, you, bully ball to the fullest of extents. I, I think it was maybe his first bucket that he had this evening. Defender just like, it was like a trampoline yeah. bouncing backward off of DJ. Just too strong. Absolutely had no answer for DJ Burns in the paint. And, you know, to hear the crowd lose their mind every time he touches the ball in a neutral arena in the NCAA tournament, I think – that is even more meaningful than getting it at home. Of course you're going to get it at home. But to get it in the NCAA tournament, when you have Kentucky fans and Oakland fans, I'm sure even Texas Tech fans were like, oh, man, let's see what he can do with it this time. Because yeah. he was just – he's the darling. He's the darling yeah. of this NCAA tournament. NC State is America's team right now, and DJ Burns is the face of that team. Hey, as Scott Van Pelt said, when the big fella gets it down low, regular. Go to regulate. You know what I mean? Hey, RIP to Nate, dog. He had to regulate. That's what that's what's going on down there, you know. And and uh, that's you know, it, it's it's interesting to see because DJ Burns is not only so interesting because he 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 does not have the typical build that you think of for a basketball player, but also his personality, also who he is off the court. Right? You and I have interacted with him multiple times off the court. And he, he's a he's a wonderful young man. He's a he's just a joy to be around, a joy to talk to. And, you know, you compile that with one of the sweetest spin moves 
in, in the NCAA. You combine that with a big physical body that you don't know if he's going to be playing left tackle or center in the NBA. But either way, you know that the guy's got some serious talent. You know, it, it's something that you got to look at it. You got to say, hey, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. And so the nation's loving him. The nation's loving this team. This feels strange and unfamiliar as a Wolfpack fan being being beloved in this way. But like I said, let the good times roll, baby. All right. We're going to pay some bills real quickly. Then we're going to get into how the pack pulled this off defensively against Texas Tech. Our first sponsor, if I can pull it up quick enough, is Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. This is just like any of our all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys are able to take it to the next level. How could you pick any other team than our NC State Wolfpack? Obviously, this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised all of us with a powerful performance in last week's ACC tournament, plus a first-round win against Texas Tech, giving them their biggest or one of our biggest moments in program history. They say win life, go rogue, and that is exactly what the Wolfpack have done. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I tell you what, trying to defend DJ Burns in the paint is like trying to defend a Nissan. I mean, <laughs> how, how do you, well, I mean, I guess the ultimate answer is to just double team him until he physically cannot move. Teams like yeah. Virginia have pulled that pulled that off in the past, but Texas Tech, there's only really so much they could prepare for. And then you get him on the court, and it's like, okay, this this is way different than what you could even watch on on film or see it on paper. Once he's in your face and he's backing you down, and he's preparing for that spin move. There's not a whole lot you can do. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, I. I look at DJ Burns and I, I talk about, you know, how special he is, but let's talk about the front court in general. Yes. They all bring such different, excuse me. They all bring such different things that it is like, it's, it's hard to game plan for. It's hard to stop. You have the guy who is the Uber skilled, not necessarily the greatest athlete, but again, just wildly skilled, very experienced, savvy, crafty veteran in DJ Burns. And, and he, when he gets to that left hand, when he's going over that left shoulder, it's it's a done deal. Book it. That's two points. You got him. But then you got the ball of energy, the live wire, the guy that you know he's going to be diving on the floor for loose balls. He's going to be the Dennis Robin of this team, saying some of the partying and outside the court antics, and Ben Middlebrook, right? You got him rolling. And then – You've got the guy with the skill, the finesse, the 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 ability to handle on the outside, the ability to have a couple games. You're like, did he just go 60% from three, averaging shooting three, two, three threes a game over a five-game period? What? Right. And Mo Diara, and I'll tell you this much, man, this, this uh, again, what he is doing is extremely special. And, you know, we've all, we all know that he is a practicing Muslim celebrating Ramadan, which is phenomenal. For, for him to, you know, stick to that uh, religious practice where he is not eating, drinking anything till the sun goes down. Phenomenal. That that type of discipline, that type of resilience, you know, far be it for, for me to, to, to even speculate on what that must feel like. But I for to show up and show out in the way that he did, regardless of how much you have or have not had, the phenomenal. And so to, to know that he's doing this while, you know, also testing his mental and physical fortitude, it's just... You, you get something different from all three of them to where, okay, we'll, we'll prepare for DJ Burns and we'll we'll slow him down a little bit. Well, what about Ben Middlebrook? All right, well, well, we'll we'll keep the energy guy off the boards and we'll be okay. Well, what about Modiara? All right, well, we'll keep the skill guy off the board. And then you're forgetting our leading scorer we ain't even mentioned yet. Our best perimeter defenders we ain't even mentioned yet. Mm-hmm. So this team is is, you know, they're playing at a level right now they can beat anybody. But even while they're playing at this level, Wolfpack Nation, celebrate, enjoy it, and again, don't go into it with expectations. Just enjoy this team for who they are and what they are, which is a team that's playing their asses off right now. Yeah, and, of course, coming into the season and early in the season, we talked so much about why the depth of this roster was supposed to make a real difference on this team. 
And you saw it at some points early on, kind of struggled with it at other points throughout the, you know, the middle part of the season. But for some reason, in these last eight, nine days, the depth has never been more effective than it is right now at any other point of the season. And that goes a long way defensively, transitioning this conversation into what the what the pack provided defensively this evening. Texas Tech really to hurt the pack consistently, they needed to get enough from the perimeter consistently yeah. to make a difference there. And you could tell NC State's def- defensive mindset was to take away as much as they could from the three-point line. And it was effective. Pop Isaacs, which is Texas Tech's leading scorer, I believe he finished with what 12 points, and it was a very inefficient 12 points at that. You yeah. saw kind of late yeah. in that second half, all Texas Tech could do is just launch from three, and that was basically it. They they had run out of ideas because they could not get anything going from the perimeter. They didn't want to go inside because you have a guy like Mo DR and Ben Middlebrooks and DJ Burns that can alter any kind of shot you want to get in the paint. So they just forced it. They just started building a house from deep, and it was just not – obviously that's not going to get it done unless you know you catch fire like a team like Oakland did. We'll close the show talking about them. But defensively, it was all you could ask for tonight from NC State. You take away their guards, you take away the perimeter shooting, and you force them to go inside and beat you. And Texas Tech was not interested in doing so. So defensively, it was excellent. I thought you forced a decent amount of tur- turnovers as well. Rebounding, Mo Diara, what more can you say about that guy right now? A, a rebounding heater like we have not seen in a very long time at NC State. So Spectacular, af- spectacular effort defensively. Spectacular effort, effort on the boards. Can you tell I'm tired? And spectacular effort forcing the issue. You wanted Texas Tech to force things and you know have that play into the hands of NC State, and that is exactly what they got done. Yeah, and, and when when we were talking about this game, we talked about the fact that uh, this Texas Tech team is a balanced team on the perimeter. They, this team is about their their guards. You know, they had three or four guards averaging double digits there. And that's that's who this team is. And, and you are going to have to defend, not just when their starters are in, even when their two squad is in. You need to defend those guards or else you'll look up and they'll find themselves, you know, having the lead on you and, and all that type of stuff. And and I'll tell you, you know, I we, we started off the episode talking about some of the things that I've been going through personally, play, playing through a little bit of pain in this thing. Grayson was sick last week, and we got Jaden Taylor out there defending his behind off with on with, one leg. You know, it, 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 and you can see it; you can visibly see it when he's on offense. But it's it's so it's so amazing because normally with with players, you see the opposite. You see them lagging defensively, and then when they get the ball on offense, you're like, "Oh wait, who's that guy? Why isn't that guy playing defense?" You know, and and with Jaden Taylor, he's he's showing up and showing out defensively, and and just being you know, this amazing version of himself every time he's asked to get in that chair and defend a guy who, again, is one of the better scorers in the uh, in the Big 12. So, you know, he his his what he did can't be um, overstated. What Casey Morsell did in this game can't be overstated. And I'll tell you, Breon Pass, brother, good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to, you know, good to eat. It, it's it's. I'm going to transfer this over to uh, football. Robert and I said, what now? Be relevant when your number is called. And we talk about, you know, this team's depth all year. That depth only matters if you are relevant when your number is called. And this team, for sure, all of these guys that showed up tonight, they were relevant when their number was called. The good guys win. America's team continues rolling. I see two comments, comments in here that really hit the nail on the head. First one here comes from Trevor Gray. Says, you got to love how the pack came out in the second half, took control, and never gave the lead back. And that is not exactly something that we are used to as NC State basketball fans, maybe in the last week or so. But there's just like a different feel to this team, a different confidence, a different hunger, a different fire in this team that they had made up their mind that they were going to come out, force the issue, and then from there on out, this was our game to lose. And yeah. that kind of mentality is exactly where you want to be standing in this March Madness tournament. The second one here comes from Yag. Love how the team kept their composure. That's my second part of this. It felt like any kind of mini run that Texas Tech tried to make, completely unfazed. 
There was nothing that Texas Tech could have done in this game that would have thrown the pack off of their off their balance here. They were ready for any of it. They were ready for all of it, and they had an answer every single time Texas Tech had a punch for them. Yeah, and that's and that's what comes with a team that's been through some of the battle scars they've been through, right? The the, the old expression about scars, right? Um, a scar doesn't mean you were weak. It means you were stronger than whatever tried to kill you. And this team, they, you look at some of the losses that they've taken, you look at some of the battles that this team has had all this year, and, and those are the scars of this team that tell the story. It tells the story of a team that despite they the fact that they knew their coach is gone if they lose to Louisville, get down to Louisville, fight back. Their coach is gone if they lose to Syracuse and, and they use the, the motivation from Jim Beheim fight back. Their coach, even though, <clears throat> excuse me, even though you play well against Duke, if you don't close that game out, your coach is probably still gone. And right. Duke showed many moments where, you know, they, they were fighting and trying to come back. You fight back. You regain. And, and of course, the UVA game. Do I need to say more? Do I need to say more? I, I, I can just mention the game. And, and, you know, multiple moments where they had to keep their composure. And so, this is a team that's showing, even when you think their back is against the wall, even when you think they got nothing left, it's calm. It's it's poised. It's, hey, we've been here before. We can right. handle this. Yeah, they, they feel like they're built for this. All of the trials and tribulations they went through over the course of this entire season, it feels like they have been weathered for this exact scenario, this exact environment. And that is that is such an amazing feeling, let me tell you as an NC State fan, in any sport in particular, but particularly NC State basketball, to never to never feel like the moment is too big or any run is out of reach or you don't have enough in the tank to counter a, a, a run, you know, in particular from a Texas Tech or whoever. They, it just feels like nothing is out of the realm of possibility for this team right now. You want to talk about who is Cinderella and who's capturing, you know, the hearts of the nation. Look no further than this here NC State Wolfpack. They have everything they need, per se, to keep this train rolling. And, of course, yeah. with this win and with Oakland upsetting Kentucky, which we had talked about on Tuesday, we told you, do not look over hey, the Oakland team. Hey, my bracket is 99.9% .9 correct. I only got <laughs> okay. one game wrong. Thank you for bringing not up. If you are in our bracket pool challenge, the Locked on Wolfpack bracket pool challenge, there is a very particular bracket that has correctly chosen 15 of 16 games so far. That is Kenton Gibbs. He sits in first place. Of course, in the event that Kenton wins, he will not win the prize, which, which we will announce later. But yeah, yeah. You, somebody please knock him down. And I, I say this because I am I am somewhere near the bottom of this pool. But don't let Kenton win. I, I need I need one of y'all to knock him down a couple of pegs here. Hey, listen. I, after everything I've been through in the past couple of days, and and going fifteen to sixteen on these guys, I'm gonna go get me some some mega millions and some Powerball tickets. Okay, I, I'm gonna go see if I can do my big one. You know what I mean? So, you know. Here, okay. Here, here's another one from Red Terror. They have learned the art of stuff the stuff. This, of course, is in reference to NC State blank stuff, stuff yeah. okay and there's been a lot of commentary on if nc state has officially killed that off after three decades of going through the most agonizing moments in on the biggest of stage this team has killed the stuff in every sense of the imagination they killed it last week going through you know five games in five days several moments where they could have folded you look at the Michael O'Connell shot, the way that that went in, the moment it went in, the way they took over over time from that point on. Of course, beating UNC in itself is enough to stuff the stuff in the ACC championship, but it's continuing. You knock off Texas Tech tonight. They were favored, or Texas Tech was favored. Big 12, we already talked about this, the perception around the Big 12 and what they could do. Texas Tech is primarily known for their defense and NC State more or less got anything they wanted offensively tonight. That's stuffing the stuff. That's not letting the moment to be too big for you at any point in time. So they have learned the art of stuffing the stuff. And I tell you what, reversing that role has a lot of NC State fans dreaming right now. There, there is, there is nobody that feels unbeatable in this tournament right now. Nobody. 
absolutely yeah. nobody. And That's I, I want to to be. And I want to say that Kevin Keats is uh, the best thing that Kevin Keats has done here is create a culture in such a short time. Create a culture in such a short time because we talk about toward the end of the uh, regular season. Let's be very honest. <clears throat> you and I can both admit that team looked lifeless and listless at points. It did. It did. And now these guys look like they're having so much fun. And we've talked about DJ Burns and, and you know, his who he is as a, a human being and all that. But I saw multiple comments about how he celebrates his teammates' successes and all that. That is everybody on this team. Look at the bench. Look at the bench. Most, most teams, their bench mob is limited to a few walk-ons and a couple in the bench guys that are, you know, they, it's just not their time yet. If you look at this team, they're going crazy for everything that the guys on the court are doing. The starters, the twos, the guy, everybody is going crazy as if, you know, they're 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 playing like they just love Gary Hodge so much they refuse to let him retire. <laughs> you know, they, they're playing like they love each other so much they refuse to, to not play a game without DJ Burns. They refuse to play another game without Casey Morsell. They refuse to, to, you know, have a situation where – those seniors uh, have to go out without cutting down another net. Yeah, yeah. Poor, poor Gary Hahn there, as Jason noted in the comments. Guy's just trying to retire. He's just trying to go to Cancun on three. And here, here's <laughs> Entry State refuses to lose another ball game. So I'm, I can only imagine Gary Hahn is on the ride of a lifetime right now, as, yeah. as are the rest of us. But if anyone deserves to see some, some success here, some postseason success, it is certainly Gary Hahn. So. Happy he gets another at least one more game. Coming up, we're going to be talking about Oakland and the and the challenges they present here in the second round after I pay another bill here. This next ad is from FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets, unless you're me, of course, because I'm already busted, because FanDuel lets you bet on every <laughs> single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can sign up and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. So obviously here, because it was the game played in Pittsburgh before ours, the 14-seeded Oakland Golden Grizzlies knock off the three-seeded Kentucky Wildcats, and we now have to step up and play Oakland. They're yeah. feeling good right now. They beat Kentucky. They feel like they are America's team. NC State is tasked with showing them otherwise on Saturday night. And I can I, – what is the last name of the the, the white guy? Is it Golke? Yeah, I believe Golke so. Golke for Oakland. I, I, I tweeted that he looks like Josh Duhamel. Du, du, Dumel, <laughs> Josh Duhamel. Yeah, you know I, guess, the guy I, guess, I get where you're going there. He went absolutely crazy coming off the bench as well. Yeah. I believe he hit 10 threes on Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But hear, um, hear me, hear me when I say this. Oakland is your prototypical mid-major in that they don't have the size to play with Modiara. They don't have the size to play with DJ Burns. They don't have the size to play with Ben Middlebrooks. So if I'm MC, if I am NC State. I am looking at tonight against Texas Tech and probably looking to run back a very similar offensive game plan because I don't suspect that Oakland can answer for those three in the paint. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing that, you know, Oakland – I talked about Oakland being badly underseeded on Twitter. I said that that was a team that was underseeded, a Kentucky team that was a little bit overrated. That was a game to watch. But here's the thing. Um, Oakland's Achilles heel all year, and, and part of the reason that their record is what it is is because they've struggled against bigs that can score. If you have a team that has bigs that can put it in a bucket, you have a good shot against Oakland. And our bigs, they set the pace. They set the pace. But the key, the key to this game against Oakland is not being complacent because that is a team that, you know, just like most other Cinderella's, just like most other mid-majors, they catch you because they sneak up on you. Correct. They catch you because you don't take film as seriously because you're like, their center is how tall? Oh, my God. Ew. What's that, brother? Brother, what's that? That's not a center. And next thing you know, 
you're you're getting threes rained down on you. And so with that being said, um, I'm I'm very I'm very you know very much so in the mindset of we have the tools. This team needs to approach it the right way, which I believe they will, because this team has seen we can beat anybody, but we've seen earlier in the season we can lose to anybody. And so, you know, it's it's time to it's time to truly strap in and and you know, our guards especially. If our guards can play the type of defense they play tonight against Oakland, we'll yeah. be just fine. But if we're seeing guys on the perimeter left open, if we're seeing folks, you know, defending with their hands instead of their feet, getting lazy and reaching, it's going to be a real, real long night. And, you know, the clock is going to strike midnight for us as, as the Cinderella at that point in time. Yeah, you see this comment on the bottom of the screen from Chilton. Putting Casey Morsell on Golki makes a whole lot of sense to me. And typically I probably would say Jaden Taylor, but if he's playing on one foot, then yeah, you – absolutely go Casey Morsell there. And I talked about the way that Golke basically single-handedly beat Kentucky because they probably just weren't expecting a guy like that to shoot how he does. He hit 10 threes. <clears throat> Every single shot he took was a three. He was 10 of 20 in the game. All 20 of those shots came from three. You know what he's going to do. This is like, if you if you remember back, maybe some PTSD here, Chris Bell on Syracuse. You know what he is in the game to do, okay? Oh. You cannot allow that guy to beat you. Yeah. yeah. Make literally any other person on Oakland's roster attempt to beat you. Because I say this as respectfully as I can, I don't think they can. I don't think they can go in the paint and repeatedly beat Burns, beat Diara, beat Middlebrooks. I just don't yeah. think they can do it. Yeah. And so when they have one guy – who will all, like quite literally only shoot from three. I, I had heard on the broadcast earlier that he has like 357, 350 something field goals, field goal attempts this year, and like all but six or seven of them are from three. He is in the game for one purpose. There is no mistake to be made here. He's going to try and beat you from deep. Make sure that doesn't happen. Casey Morsell, the challenge is yours. You, are, yeah. you have been primarily known as our best on-ball defender for the last couple of years now, mixed with Jaden Taylor this year, Jaden's on one foot. This is Casey's. This is Casey's assignment. Take to it. And and the other thing that I want to say about Oakland, there's a reason that I said they have excellent scoring guards. They had a guard who uh, they had a guard who, or rather, a forward in Trey Townsend, but he's only six six. Uh, that you know, he he's their leading scorer. These guys. If you can, again, stop the guard play, if you can stop those guys from putting up uh, really good numbers, you'll be just fine. You'll be just fine. That is the whole premise of this thing. You stop Goki, you stop Townsend. Townsend, who I believe was the leading scorer in the Horizon Conference outright, if you can, you know, make those guys be inefficient, you're good. You're good. You got it. You're okay. But if you let them get hot, if you let this team get on a roll, again, you know, we're we're both coming in here with glass slippers and, and riding in carriages. Somebody, that clock got to strike midnight. And and I'll tell you this much. If this team goes into it with the right attitude, we'll be fine. But if this team goes into it with the, all right, we're going to go ahead and break dance our way into the Sweet 16 because we got these little guys in front of us, you'll be watching Goki and you'll be watching Townsend and you'll be watching the Oakland Bears, you know, I'm a Michigan guy. I know exactly where Oakland is. I know all about Oakland County and all that. It's right outside of Wayne County where I'm from, born and raised in Detroit. And I'm telling you, they'll be they'll be dancing up in Michigan if if you don't take this game seriously. One thing that I feel like I really know it to be true about Kevin Keats, he will not let this team overlook anyone. And especially after everything you just accomplished. You are not in a position to overlook anyone. Not now, basically not ever. And so I don't think that's going to start on Saturday. And having Oakland and Kentucky be the game before yours, so you have nothing better to do than to scout the two of those teams before yours. I think they know exactly what needs to be done. They know exactly who to look for. And they know the exact amount of intensity that they have to bring to this game. Because, Or else, yeah, you will turn Oakland into America's team if you decide to mess around with them. Because if not, you can be that team. They know they can be this team. 
you have to go out and execute. You have to play NC State basketball the same way you have done for the last six consecutive wins. If you if you can do all that, I have a lot of faith that they can take this game and then move forward to the Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, for those of you who didn't know, yes, the Oakland Bears are in Michigan. They're they're located in Oakland County in Michigan. That's that's why they're uh, the Oakland Bears. It's not the Bay Area Oakland. It is Oakland, Michigan. But, yeah, hopefully, you know, hey, listen, I love it. I think it's a great state. I think it's a great state in the world and all that. And hopefully we can send them back to Michigan uh, with, you know, hey, congratulations, great job. But, you know, it's the Wolfpack's time now, baby. All right, folks, that'll do it for us here on Thursday evening. It's now 1.20 in the morning, and we had over 150 of y'all in here with us. That's crazy. That is crazy, but we're not surprised because Wolfpack Nation is better than every single other nation there ever is and has been, okay? Y'all are the best. This run is incredible, and we get to do this again on Saturday night. NC State advances They beat Texas Tech. They will play Oakland in the second round in Pittsburgh on Saturday. Of course, you will have another live stream from us on Saturday evening. We're telling you this now. We're going to remind everyone, of course, on Twitter and throughout the rest of social media up until that point. But NC State beats Texas Tech. We're moving on. Kevin Keats has defeated the NCAA tournament allegations. He picks up his first win in a Wolfpack, I guess, track suit. I was going to say uniform. Track suit is now technically correct. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We will see you all Saturday night for hopefully another Wolfpack win. Actually, we'll have a podcast tomorrow on Friday as well. We'll see you on Friday and then Saturday. But thank you all so much for joining us. Wolfpack win. Go Pack. Go Pack.